When did you begin? Uh, as a as a sports writer, oh, just as a writer. As a writer, my first piece in the New Yorker was in I was in the army, and I think it was in February of nineteen forty four. But then you joined in fifty six. I came on as an editor in fifty six. Yes, and you have worked as a chief fiction editor, or you've written fiction, nonfiction, criticism. You used to write an annual Christmas poem for the magazine. I still do. Uh, when did you begin writing about sports? Uh, in 62, uh, actually I'd written before that, I'd written some uh, sporting scene pieces about hockey and football and stuff like that. But in 62, uh, Bill Sean, the editor, came and said we needed more sports. And he knew I was a baseball fan and he told me to go to spring training and see if I could think of something to say. And uh, I've been sort of doing it ever since. <laughs> Didn't you also write for write about sports when you were at the Washington Post? Didn't I you? was. I was a sports writer for a couple of years at the at the sports section of the Post. And the first time I met Roger was when I was an intern reporter at the Post. And Roger had just published a book called Late Innings, and I had read him a lot and loved his work. We um, both looked exactly the same. We looked exactly the same, and I was in short pants. And uh, I was told to meet him at this very dark Italian restaurant outside of a radio or a television station in in suburban D.C. And um, he came in, and we couldn't find each other for a while. And the next thing you know, he was showing me on this uh, table with sugar packets and and salt shakers and pepper shakers how Fenway Park is arranged and all the angles of the outfield wall. And uh, so I, I, I... I thought I'm never going to be this good, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to have this grasp of the detail of the complexity of baseball. But you know, Roger really uh, remains uh, the great baseball writer of our 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 time and and earlier times too. And one critic has uh, said that uh, one of Roger's pieces, uh, "Gone for Good," uh, the about the career of Steve Blass, may be the best piece that anyone has ever written on baseball or any other sport. So that that's high praise, isn't I, it? I, I think of Roger first and foremost as a writer who decided to take baseball up as 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 a as a way of as a way of writing and as a way of looking at so many things without getting too fancy about it. And one of the extraordinary things is the ability to throw a voice. That if you look at the early, even these early pieces in the summer game, what you have is a writer that invents a voice and a kind of character that is himself. That I, I have to tell you, the Roger that I first knew and know now, I've known him for, for, for many years, that voice is not always in evidence. It's, it's something that you have to work very, very hard. People think that the idea of a writer finding his voice or her voice, that great cliche of the, of the classroom, is something that's kind of easily done. I, I think that it's a real literary achievement. But haven't some of the finest stylists written about sports? Why do you think that is? Uh, Ring Lardner, uh, uh, well, somebody, Red what, Smith. So, uh, somebody once said that the smaller the ball, the better the writing, uh, because the, it starts with golf, which is the smallest ball, I guess, used. And there's been a lot of terrific golf writing, and we have some in this book by Herbert Warren Wind. Um, the great thing about writing about baseball, I think, is there's so much time uh, to wait and to watch. There's a whole lot of waiting in baseball. And there's ball ball one, ball two, strike one, and... And you look around and you can look at the batters and you can think about the game and you can take notes and you can reflect on what you can sort of think and you can now and then a real thought descends and you can take a note and write it down. When I began writing about baseball, I would travel around to the parks and I was afraid to talk to the ball players. I didn't know them, so I, I wrote, basically wrote about myself because I was a fan and I, put, I wrote as a fan in in my pieces, I had a lot of room in the magazine and a lot of time to to write the pieces. And there's a sense of space, I think, that went around those. And and I said I'm a Red Sox fan or I'm a Mets fan and put, put that into it, which hadn't been done before. And the other thing I did at first was to write about the crowd, which has always been, before that, had been the, the omitted item. I think nobody had mentioned the crowd much, although we had forty or 50,000 or... or uh, 1,200 fans, depending on the <laughs> And on much the of game. your experience of a game is uh, involves the, the fan, people around you. What the fans you. are doing. And so I could say we, uh, because I was uh, we are, I was doing the same thing, sitting with them and watching and having the game bore me or excite me or involve me. And I could also say I. Uh, and um, 
So this is, I think, this voice. I didn't try to find a voice, but it seemed a good fit. And um, I had I had some good samples, too. One of the pieces in this wonderful collection is John Updike's famous, famous piece, Hub Fans Bid Kid Adieu, which was written three or four years before I began to write about baseball. And it's a piece about Ted Williams' last game uh, ever played. And it was a idle late summer, uh, late September game. The Red Sox weren't going anywhere. Uh, John Optic wasn't going anywhere. Actually, as he later wrote in an introduction to a later <laughs> edition, he had a, he had a, uh, a date with a, a young lady that, or a young, oh, I don't know if she's young or not, but he had a liaison uh, meeting, uh, rendezvous, and she he got stood up. And he says, what am I going to do? And she said, she's not in. And he went to the ball game instead. And you could just walk up. This is the last Ted Williams, last game ever. But you could <laughs> walk up and buy a ticket. And he walked in and sat down and watched Ted Williams uh, hit a home run in this last at bat and wrote one of the great sports pieces ever written. And for me, I think that my the tone that we're talking about and my, my way of writing about baseball was invented by John Updike because it's all in that piece. It really is. It's John writing about himself. Uh, he is involved with the crowd, and he's watching every single thing that goes on, the crowd and the atmosphere and the ball player and, and what he thinks all flow into this, this narrative. A beautiful piece of writing. My guests are Roger Angel of The New Yorker and of uh, any number of best-selling books on sports, mostly baseball. Uh, David Remnick, who's the editor of The New Yorker and editor of a new book called The Only Game in Town, Sports Writing from The New Yorker. It's published by Random House.